Welcome back to FECAM's UNCH Theology Slide Series. I am Akiel Abusaya and I will be taking you through the slides of lymphoid organs. We begin with the slide of the lymph node. Lymph node is an encapsulated lymphoid organ that is situated along the course of the lymphatic vessels. It is made up of two parts. The outer part, which is highly cellular, called the cortex and then the inner part, which is less cellular, you can see here, and then it's called the medulla. The lymph node has a capsule in this part, in this slide, stained blue, with extensions called trabeculae extending from this capsule into the substance of the node. Beneath this capsule is a narrow space called the subcapsular sinus. You can see this under this blue, under this blue capsule, there is a narrow white space, and this space is called the subcapsular sinus, into which the afferent lymphatic vessels drain. From this subcapsular sinus, channels called the cortical sinuses pass towards the medulla through the cortical cell mass. However, the channels that are closer that are adjacent to the Trabeculae tend to follow a more direct course, as you can see here, while others that are just embedded in the cortical cell mass don't really follow this direct course. Now, the cortex is made up of numerous cell aggregates, and these cellular aggregates are called the follicles. Now, this so these follicles are of two forms. We have the primary follicle and then the secondary follicle. The secondary follicle having a pale center, while the primary follicle with no pale center. Now the medulla, as you can see here, is less stained, like it's pale stained than, than, the, than the cortex because of the fact that it is less cellular. And then it contains the medullary sinus. These are also channels. So these are now the medullary sinus here are the ones that we can see these whitish, these whitish spaces we can see here. Those are the medullary sinus, and they, they make up the bulk of the medulla. Now extensions, the cortical cells can actually extend into the the, the medulla, and then when they extend into the medulla, they are called the the form cell aggregates called medullary cords so we can see a little cell aggregate here and here so these are the medullary cords now the follicles are actually these follicles are actually aggregates of b cells and then these b cells can be in the resting state as in what we see in the primary follicle or in the active state as what we see in the secondary follicle and this secondary follicle as i said you have it contains a pale center which is called a germinal center that is surrounded by a darker zone called the mantle zone this is also another slide of the lymph node here we can identify the capsule which is this pink stained capsule here and then beneath it we can identify our subcapsular sinus and then we can also see channels of the cortical sinuses you can see the channels of the cortical sinuses. So this is the cortex. You can see the cortex and then the medulla. This one, is, the outline is not really very clear, but you can see the cortex with the cellular aggregates, that means the follicles. So we can see this is a secondary follicle having the germinal center with the mantle layer. Also, this so you can see the secondary. These ones there are the primary follicles, as you can see in our slide. So these are the primary follicles. So you can see the channels. So this one doesn't really have a very good outline, but I think in subsequent slides we are going to see a better outline. Here we can see the parts of the lymph node much more clearly. Here we can see the capsule. This is the capsule this pink stained part this is a capsule then under it we can see the space this is a subcapsular space and then it's then these other spaces that we can see here these are the cortical spaces these ones here you can see the cortical spaces 
Now we can see our the, in the cortex, we can see the cell aggregates, which are the follicles. This is a secondary follicle. This is another secondary follicle. This is a primary follicle. This is a primary follicle starting to become secondary but still primary. Then this is a secondary follicle because you can see the germinal center and then the mantle layer. Then if you go further under this place, we are going towards the medulla. This is also another slide of the lymph node. Here we can identify our capsule. You can see the capsule. And then under the capsule, you can see the subcapsular sinus. And then we can identify other sinuses, that means the cortical sinuses that are extending towards the medulla. Then we can differentiate our cortex, which is this part, from the medulla. Because we can see the lymphoid follicles. You can see the cell aggregates, the lymphoid follicles in our cortex. And then in the medulla, we can see the spaces, even though these spaces are filled with lymph, but we can see these spaces representing the medullary sinus. And then between the spaces are the extensions of the cortical cells, and then this time called the medullary cords. So you can see the spaces here. You can see the spaces which are the medullary sinuses and then the medullary cord. This gives a very good definition of our lymph node. As you can see, the capsule with the subcapsular sinus and then the cortex containing the cell aggregates, the follicles. You can see this is a secondary follicle with a pale center and then the primary follicles. And then if we go further, we can see the medullary sinuses. These are the medullary sinuses. And then between with these medullary sinuses, you can see the medullary cord, which are extensions of cells. So you can see these medullary cords and then the medullary sinuses. Now, what are the reasons for education for the, the lymph node? One is the presence of primary and secondary lymphoid follicle, then presence of the medullary cords, presence of the medullary sinuses, and then presence of the subcapsular sinus. These are reasons for identification for the lymph node. We move to the slide of the spleen. The spleen is a lymphoid organ made up of red pulp and white pulp. Microscopically, the spleen appears to consist of discrete white nodules called the white pulp embedded in a red matrix called the red pulp. Similarly, microscopically, the spleen appears to have the white pulp, which consists of lymphoid aggregates, as you can see in our slide, and then the red pulp, which makes up the background. The red pulp makes up the bulk of the organ and it's a highly vascular tissue. It is made up of, that means the red pulp is made up of the venous sinus, that means the venous sinuses, and then the parenchyma. This parenchyma also called the cord of Beerots. The parenchyma is composed mostly of capillaries, macrophages, blood cells, and reticulin fibers. And then this, the white pulp is made up of lymphoid follicle, I said earlier. And then these lymphoid follicles are aggregates of T and B lymphocytes. In most cases, the lymphoid follicles resemble the secondary follicles that we can see in the lymph node having the germinal center and then this is pale that means this pale stained germinal center and then the mantle and marginal zone which is deeply stained more than the center we can also have the white the white pulp just appearing as a as the primary follicle, just as we can see here, without no primis, without no germinal center. This is another slide of the spleen. Here we can note the pink background, which is the red pulp, and then the white pulp, the cell aggregates. You can see the cell aggregates here, which represents the white pulp of the spleen. This slide shows the slide of the red pulp and then something that looks like the white pulp. However, this place still remains the red pulp because the zone 
the zone of red pulp that is just surrounding the white pulp also contains a bulk of lymphocytes. And then this part is actually called the perilymphoid red pulp. So one feature that characterizes this perilymphoid red pulp is the presence of this central artery. And we are going to see how it relates to the white pulp in the next slide. But one thing you should notice is that this pre the presence of this central artery can be used to identify the white pulp, differentiating it from the secondary and primary lymphoid follicles that we see in lymph node. So this, this central artery is actually almost always present in the vicinity of the white pulp. Now in this slide, we are going to identify the red pulp, the white pulp, and then the peri-lymphoid red pulp. So now we have here, yeah, this is a capsule, then the red pulp, we can see some venous sinuses and then the parenchyma. Then let's focus on this part. Now we see this dark stained part. This is the white pulp. Now this lightly stained part that is surrounding this white pulp is actually the peri lymphoid red pulp. So because this slide in this slide we can mainly see the white pulp appearing as primary follicles. Just we can see this one here. We can see this one here. So what this zone that is surrounding it is the perilymphoid red pulp and then we can we can identify it by seeing you can see that there are even two central arteries in this perilymphoid red pulp also here this is the perilymphoid red pulp and then this is the white pulp we can see the central artery here here we can also see this is the white pulp and then we can see the perilymphoid so you can see that when we have a white pulp immediately we are going to have a perilymphoid red pulp and then in this period for red pulp we are going to identify the central arteries in this zone this is another slide of the spleen you can identify the capsule and then now we can see this is the red pulp now let's just take this one this is the white pulp now you can see this is the the it has this time it has a germinal center and then the mantle zone then you can see that there is also a zone of cell aggregate surrounding this white pulp and it, you can also identify our center our central artery here so this is showing that this is the peri lymphoid red pulp and then the central artery you can also see here this is the white pulp with the germinal center and then the mantle zone and then you can see that there is also another another zone of cell aggregate here then this is the central artery, central artery. So you can see that the central artery seems to appear everywhere we have the white pulp. This slide also shows the slide of the spleen. Here we can identify the red pulp. Then we can see a central artery here showing that this is still the perilymphoid zone. So you can see that this is a lympho this is a white white pulp. So this is a white pulp with the perilymphoid zone surrounding it because of the presence of the central artery. Now, what are the reasons for education of um, the spleen? One, presence of white pulp. Two, presence of red pulp. And three, presence of central arteries in the perilymphoid red pulp zones. Now, the basic function of the spleen is that the spleen does to the blood what the lymph node does to the limbs. Now let's go to the slide of the thymus. The thymus is a lobulated lymphoid organ that is invested in a capsule. Now from the capsule, we have interlobular septa. So we have the capsule here. We have interlobular septa that radiates from this capsule into the substance of the organ. So dividing the organ into lobules. So taking this lobe as an example, a lobe is actually divided into two distinct zones. We have the outer zone, which is the outer cortex, which is deeply stained, and then the inner medulla, which is pale stained. Now, one of the things that characterizes the medulla is the presence of the acyl corpuscles. You can see these structures, these dots, these structures there. These are the acyl corpuscles. However, a lobu can actually have more than one medulla. Just what you can see here, you can see this is a medulla in this lobu, this is another medulla. In this logo this is another slide showing the thymus here we can have our imaginary capsule then from the capsule the 
septum, the interlobular septa, dividing the, the thymus into lobus. So you can see one lobe here, another lobe here, another lobe here. And now in this lobe, we can identify the cortex that is dark stained more than the medulla, the, the inner medulla that we can see here, which is pale stained or lightly stained. In this, we can also see the cortex that is dark stained and then the medulla we can see this one this particular lobe have about three medulla so we can see here we can see here we can also see here so we have the thymus here again we can see the septa then the lobe then the cortex which is deeply stained and then the medulla with the acyl corpuscles so this is one acyl corpus this is also another slide of the thymus. One of the things you can note here is the septa, the interlobular septa. So we have one lobu, another lobu, another lobu here. And then the, what we can also see, we can see the arrow pointing to the acyl corpus, saying that this is the medulla, even though we are not able to differentiate the cortex from the medulla in this particular slide. So what is the main reason for education for the thymus? The main reason for education of the thymus is actually the presence of acyl corpuscles in the medulla. Lastly, we will discuss the slide of the tonsil. The tonsils are organized masses of lymphoid tissues. The palatine tonsil, together with the lingua tonsil, the pharyngeal tonsil, and the tuba tonsil, the form what we call the wadia ring, and these rings serve as a policeman for the digestive and respiratory tract. Now, deeply Invaginating the tonsil are what we call the tonsillar crypts. So this is the tonsillar crypt. And then the tonsil parenchyma actually contains numerous lymphoid follicles with germinal centers. Like this one now, we have the germinal center, this pale part, and then the outer part here. This is a bit deeper than the inner part, which is the this one forms the mantle zone just like what we see in the secondary follicle this is also another slide of the tonsil so you can see the creeps and then we can see our lymphoid follicles arranging themselves along the creeps so we can see this we can see it here this also shows the tonsil you can see the creeps with its branches and then the parenchyma of this tonsil filled with lymphoid follicles as you can see in the slide so these cell aggregates are the lymphoid follicles. Still on the slide of the tonsil, we can identify the tonsillar crypts, which you have here. And then we can see the lymphoid follicles that are scattered along the around the parenchyma. You can see these ones. So what are the reasons for identification for the tonsil? One, presence of tonsillar crypts. And then two, arrangement of the follicles along these tonsillar crypts. So this is where we are going to stop for today. If you have any comments, leave them below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.